Good morning. Welcome to worship at Pilgrim Lutheran Church and School on this beautiful Chicago wintry morning in which we get to celebrate the light of Christ in this epiphany season and be able to embody what it means to be a community of faith at such a time in our history. So thank you everyone for being here. If any one of you had stayed home, it would be a different experience. My name is Pastor Christian, and on behalf of the entire community of Pilgrim Church, School, and Hot Meals, we welcome you. We are a fully welcoming and affirming community, and we have a lot to look forward to do today as we celebrate the good news that God's got y'all. And also we look forward to a congregational meeting for all members directly following the service. So uh, please make yourselves at home, follow along on the screen or in the bulletin. And we are very excited to share this moment of renewal with all of you. So please take a deep breath. And let us prepare our hearts and our lives for worship. sanctuary. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcoming the coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign, by water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you confound the world's wisdom in giving your kingdom to the lowly and the pure in heart. Give us such a hunger and thirst for justice and perseverance in striving for peace that in our words and deeds the world may see the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The children may come forward for a time of blessing. Really great. Uh, it is first and foremost time to give praise that we are a community of faith that is blessed by children. I don't know if you've ever heard of the whole conundrum that often the church in these days focuses on teaching children and blessing adults. But it's also good to do the opposite, right? Where we bless the children and we make sure that we're all learning as adults. Amen? Amen. So I just want for our children's message today, especially as we talk about a community that fishes for people, that uh, we bless our children uh, to be those that learn what it means to be a fishing community. Have you guys ever been fishing, by the way? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Have you guys ever caught a fish? Yeah. Everyone on the count of three, hold up how big the fish is that you caught. One, two, three. Yeah. All right, so we have a very humble group of children, which speaks to the wonderful parenting and ministry going on. Let us pray. Uh, God, we thank you so much uh, that you are blessing and teaching all of us in this hour of history, and we have so much to learn from you. Uh, Lord, help us to continue to repent, to change, to grow. And thank you to Pastor Anakari for leading our children's ministry on Sundays. Thank you for the ways you're opening up the wonder of faith, household by household, and continue to empower us uh, to be those that fish for people, that form that new community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. We release Let's you go. To the time of learning and Let's growth. go, everybody. Amen. first reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according for, to the Gospel of St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And as Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing their nets, and Jesus called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. This is the gospel of the Lord. May be seated. Grace and peace to you through God our Father and the Lord our Liberator and the Spirit our Reconciler. Amen. Before I get started, I just have to say this is a beautiful group of people. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you look beautiful this morning absolutely beautiful. Just can't believe it. Um, so I want to talk about, of course, the Word of God this morning, but is anyone out here a sports fan? Anyone like sports? Or is it just me? Okay, good. So I want to keep it a little light this morning. We got a lot of heavy topics going on in the world, but uh, who is the best athlete in the history of the world? Tell me, raise a hand and say, I saw Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. Okay, that's one vote. Yeah. Okay, I mean, in the first service was Michael Jordan. I, I mean, you know you can't be in Chicago and not have Michael Jordan come up first. All right, so Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan. Okay, you've already had one guess. Plus, you're at the 8 a.m. service, so just slow your roll a little bit. All right, yes, Sarah. Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe, thank you. Yes? Oh, Jim Thorpe? Babe Diedrichson. Babe Diedrichson. Oh, my goodness. And one more, one more. Michael Jordan. Uh, it's Michael Jordan. So we have more votes for Michael Jordan. So uh, I'm actually going to go, just for the sake of this next phase of the sermon, with Jim Thorpe. No. Just for the sake of argument, those of you who don't know, Jim Thorpe was both an individual athlete in track and field and won gold medals at the Olympics, but he was also a football player. He, I think he played lacrosse. He probably played all the sports, right? We don't have footage on Jim Thorpe, so we really don't know uh, very little footage, but he was an incredible athlete from the Native American community in this country. And if it was an individual sport, right, he was obviously superior whatever sport he chose to play, but he was also a very good football player. Am I right? Jim Thorpe was known as a football player. But even if you put 
Jim Thorpe against, just by himself, against another team of 11 people, even Jim Thorpe would probably come up short, right? One, two, 11. Just like Michael Jordan against the 92 Pistons or against the 95 Houston Rockets or against Michael Jordan against the entire uh, Utah Jazz in 1997. I know he's Michael Jordan, but I'd have to take one on five the Utah Jazz over Michael Jordan. Everyone say, boo, pastor, blasphemy. Ooh, no. No, but it's, it's that basketball is not an individual sport, right? It is a team sport. And so there is the hook of the sermon. Christianity, following Jesus, is not an individual sport. It is a team sport. And even... God becoming flesh and dwelling among us, who could have set up this whole kingdom of God thing any way God wanted, chose to make Christianity, following Jesus, a team sport. So in this moment in which we have these two amazing texts, and I have very limited time to extol them and help us have a moment of reflection. I'd like to talk about 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which gave birth to what I think is one of the most suspect and even annoying cliches that we have in Christianity, maybe even in our culture. Has anyone ever heard the phrase, and I'm not judging you if you haven't, because it's not the most famous cliche we have, God will never give you more than you can handle. Have you ever heard that? All right, so we have a lot of hands in the room. So that means it's out there. And I really think that phrase comes from this passage. When you hear it in English, it reads, God will not test you beyond your strength. So if you just hear that, not only with the English translation of the Greek, but also through our kind of individualistic, rugged mindset we have in this culture, we think, oh yeah, God will never test me beyond my, Christian Johnson's, strength. Well, I'm so glad God's given me the privilege of learning other languages, hearing the good news in other cultural contexts, because I actually was called during my first call to preach this scripture in Spanish. And so I'm like, okay, I, oh yeah, I know verse Corinthians 10. I know God will never test me beyond my strength. But then I had to read, Pueden ustedes confiar en Dios. Y'all can trust in God. And then it dawned on me that the original Greek, the letters of Paul, is talking about y'all. It's not talking about me as an individual, Scott as an individual, Ellen as an individual. It's talking about a community will never be tested beyond its communal strength. That means that there might, be too, there might be times where challenges are too much for one person. Have you ever felt, either in your own life or someone else's life, it's like, why is all that happening to that one person? Have you ever felt like that? I mean, I've certainly felt like that as a pastor. But this passage affirms that for one person, it might be too much. But when we can lean on the faithfulness of God at work in a loving community, we can get through. And that's what God gives us in the body of Christ, eating the same bread, as it says in that same scripture. We can get through because God surrounds us with a loving community. Notice I didn't say perfect community. Notice I didn't say stress-free community, but a community that continues to listen to God and listen to one another, not giving up, there is always going to be a path forward. That's a promise from God's word. In fact, I just want to point out also that from our gospel, which has two of the most powerful verses in the entire Christian movement, in Matthew chapter 4, if we enter that moment for just a few moments, 
This was not a stress-free situation. When we hear that Jesus learns that John has been put in prison, we have to remember that Jesus and John are connected on a multitude of levels. First of all, they're cousins. Second of all, Jesus had been baptized by John. Third of all, they're in this common movement that people are trying to figure out that's called Christianity eventually, people of the way. This whole public ministry of Jesus emerges when he learns that John the Baptist is in prison. This is a huge disruption to whatever we might call the kingdom of God, the movement of Jesus. The one who prepared the way is now in prison. And yes, the scriptures affirm that Jesus moves from his small town home of Nazareth to Capernaum, moving from a small town where he grew up to a bigger city by the lake. It was so nice in the first service. I was trying to remember how far it was from Nazareth to Capernaum, and I turned to our new member, Adam, who's actually from Bethlehem and going to seminary. I said, Adam, by the way, how far is it <laughs> from, from uh, uh, Nazareth to uh, Capernaum? And he is actually from there until a few moments ago he was living there. He's like, about 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, this is really nice as a preacher to be able to call upon members of the church for Holy Land geography information. Uh, so he said, yeah, it's about 15 minutes. So it was a very small move, but a significant move in that time. And yes, the scriptures are being fulfilled that a voice and a savior from the land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be the Messiah. But there's one more thing going on here. Because, as I just said, Jesus and John are linked, and now John has been arrested because of the uproar and controversy surrounding this movement in a very politically charged time in Israel's history, Scholars have pointed out, I don't think this is random that Jesus moved from Nazareth to Capernaum. He maybe had to move. Eyes were on Jesus at this point. And anything he does might raise his risk level as someone challenging the structures of oppression and the powers of empire called both Jerusalem and the Roman Empire. What I'm trying to say here is moves in faithfulness to God and God's kingdom were not without risk, without tension, without stress. In fact, when we look at these two verses that buoy our good news today, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near, and come follow me, for I will send you to fish for people. This speaks to tremendous change. I think the first verse about repentance, about a turnaround from our hearts, speaks to an individual transformation, that we just embrace the fact that we have hopes and hurts that we need to bring to God. So right now, this morning, I invite you to bring your hopes and your hurts, whatever's going on in your own life, in your household, even stuff that's going on here at Pilgrim. Let's bring those individual issues we have to the healing and reconciling power of God to show us another way to get through and to move forward. And the second phrase that has given birth to millions of sermons and initiatives in our history is, come follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. This speaks to a community that's being born. 
even in the midst of a challenging situation, to let people have another chance, another opportunity to understand themselves and what God may be calling them to do. Just like I said earlier that following Jesus is not an individual sport, following Jesus is also not a spectator sport. God has made us a team. So I would like to break out of the box for the final part of the sermon. Everyone please stand. And because God has called us to fish for people, those of us who are here in person, I would like you to uh, find someone else in the room that you haven't talked to in a while or else you have never talked to. And I'm sorry for putting you on the spot, but I just feel like we spend so much time uh, as a community uh, and church not always connecting with each other. Uh, so please move around the room and I'll give you a question to talk about. So please uh, pair up or find a small group or a pair with someone you don't know as well. Go ahead. Get away from me. Go find someone. Well done. Well done. All right. So I have two questions for you. It's on the screen, actually. So the first question, after you get their name, since we're y'all, y'all know that we're a church together, we're a people together. The first question is, what is your favorite Southern food? If you're a y'all kind of person, go ahead. All right. So if I get everyone's attention, please. Just for a second. So that was, the, uh, that was the easy one. That was the more surface one. So next question is, since Jesus is inviting us to not only uh, an inward change, but also a communal change, uh, what's one way God might be prompting you to fish for people? And so this is kind of a weird question that's probably not asked you, you every day. So I'm just throwing out some uh, possible uh, answers, you know, finding a prayer partner, going out to coffee with someone from church, inviting someone to church. We have a hot meals ministry. You could just come and sit and talk with someone. But it's one way that you could form a deeper, meaningful community with the inkling to grow in faith. Just think about it for a second as you think about what God is calling us to, to do as far as a community of faith and then start to share.
So I would love to hear from a few people, maybe one or two, oops, uh, what you learned in terms of a way. Well, I got to hear first, favorite southern foods. Let me hear, who wants to share their favorite southern food? Yeah? Mac and cheese. What else? Fried chicken. Fried chicken. That's a big one. My grandmother's baked cornbread. Bacon cornbread. Sign me up. All right. And what are some ways we can honor the invitation to uh, fish for people? Anyone have a creative idea or something that came to their mind? Yeah. Wait, you're participating a lot. I just want to make sure I hear from other people. Good job, Xavier. Why am I jumping on my own kid? That's not nice. Uh, what, what would I wish for as a pastor and a parent? Sorry, Xavier. Go ahead. Hot meals. Hot meals. Yeah, a great opportunity to connect. What else? Anyone else? Potluck. Yeah. Uh, bring something to an upcoming uh, dinner. Uh, anyone else? Okay, yep, we have that also happening at Hot Meals. Basically, all the answers involve Saturdays here at Pilgrim. No, it's a, great, it's a great opportunity to connect. And actually, all of you, by accepting my awkward invitation, uh, honored the invitation to fish for people. And I want to say that often Jesus' call to community uh, involves some kind of awkwardness, some kind of crossing a threshold of personal preference or comfort level, but it's always fulfilling. It's always getting over that threshold so we can experience more fully what it means to be uh, the kingdom that God has in mind. And so just like the call of God in Jesus' time was not devoid of tension, yet uh, filled the world with hope, so it is with us. We still have that capacity to be able to gather together and to come and follow Jesus together in community and see our hearts changed and our community strengthened and the world transformed. Amen. You can return to your seats and we'll sing together. Uh, not yet. Four minutes. Please be seated.
called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of y'all, you bring us together. You keep us together. You bless and encourage us together. Reconcile us to you and to one another. Shape your church to be people of kindness, generosity, and justice. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion and healing, you reveal your power and presence at work where it is least expected. Give your life, strength, and wisdom to all in need, especially Alexandra, Dina, Nate, Tracy, Vicki, Adam Alaraj, Helen Wallace Barrett, Joe Cayola, Valerie Carlson, Sue Couch, Jeff Farrell, Martha Hahn, Dale Halter, Kenny Jason, Desiree Krempel, Janice Kroll, Richard Martinez, Charlie Minsloff, Millie Ostrander, Joe Reese, Liz Rodowski, Tony Routh, Marie Schiffo, Katie Sullivan, Lottie Zwab, Geneva Williamson, Paulette Zeiss, Ruta Zimmerman, and all those we name before you now, out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We also pray for the loved ones of Wes Wagar. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As with your people throughout the scriptures, remind this congregation of your saving acts. We pray for our congregational meeting today. Help us to celebrate our mission and cultivate leaders to participate with humility, wisdom, and joy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, abounding in the strength of your call to redeem us and equip us, forgive us and reconcile us. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let's share the peace one to another. Xavier, now. Oh, nice. Let us join in the offering prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your in great, great love, love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. is indeed right and salutary that we should all times and all places receive with joy and gratitude the chance to start anew. By the grace offered at this table, we can be turned around by grace to have our minds and hearts enlightened by repentance and to have God open our eyes to the community that God has surrounded us with to be part of the movement of love and renovation and restoration for our own hearts and for the world. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, with the saints of every time and every place, we praise your name, O God, and join their unending hymn. And so, you remember, on the night which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, the bread that connects us all as one body, gave thanks, broke it, and gave for all to eat, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, poured it, and poured it out for all to drink, saying, take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Now let us pray. Together the prayer our Lord Jesus teaches us, each in our own way and language. Our Father, You may be seated. At this time, it's my greatest honor and joy to remind you that this is not Pilgrim's table, it's not a Lutheran table, it's the Lord's table. And it's the Lord who invites us and empowers us to be part of the community that changes our hearts and changes the world. So you can come forward at the usher's direction. In the middle, uh, I will be distributing uh, the real uh, gluten bread, which is transformed into the body of Christ. And then there will be uh, trays in which the, ooh, we have the color, color differential this, this time. So the lighter colored cups, uh, yellow, are grape juice. And the darker colored is wine, which we believe to be the living presence of Christ. We also have gluten-free kits uh, that are like this that have gluten-free bread 
and wine. And if for whatever reason you're not ready to receive this morning, please come forward anyway with your arms crossed and you will receive a blessing. And uh, we rejoice to share this sacrament with you. Please come forward as the ushers direct you.
Now may the body and blood, the living presence of our Lord and liberator Jesus, strengthen you and keep you growing in God's grace. Amen. Amen. So just a few announcements. Well, maybe less than a few, but more than a few, but less than many. How about that? Um, so first and foremost, we do have a congregational meeting that uh, is one of our two big meetings of the year, uh, starting right after this service for all members. Everyone is in, uh, welcome to join, but we want uh, just our uh, current active and um, registered members to be able to vote. So please come. Uh, we are looking at uh, electing new leadership for our council, which is very exciting. And we also have pot belly sandwiches ready for the meeting. So hospitality is high because it's high stakes to be able to make sure we invest in our ministry going forward. Uh, so we also look forward to this coming Saturday. Were you going to do Saturday too or no? Trivia night? Okay, I think we have maybe a little bit of space for those that want to join. So contact uh, myself or Sonia or one of the uh, parents of the seventh graders as we support our seventh graders to have resources to go to eighth grade uh, trip to Washington, D.C. Uh, I want to give, I forgot the first service, Jose and Daniel props. I don't know if you can see our processional cross glistening along with the uh, candle lighters, uh, but Jose and Danielle uh, actually polished them to a T. So that was a really nice act of stewardship. And uh, we're thankful for the, all the energy you guys have brought since you arrived in October uh, to be fully engaged in the worship ministry of our church. So Jose and Danielle have come from Venezuela, and they've just dove full on into our ministry, which is super inspiring. Uh, we also had the first uh, session of two in which I've gotten the privilege of sharing the immense gift I got from the congregation to, and God and the Lilly Foundation to go to uh, sabbatical. Uh, to Tanzania this past summer, so I really enjoyed telling those stories, and I seem to uh, feel that it was uh, something meaningful to everyone, so part two will be next week. Even if you missed this week, it'll be a whole different session next week, and uh, it's truly amazing to be part of a global church, and I think you have uh, one more announcement you want to give now? Oh, two. Okay, let me back, back away from the mic. Okay, so lots of opportunities for um, partying, right, here in the Pilgrim community. As Pastor, of course, mentioned, I hope to see most of you at Trivia next Saturday. But I am here this morning um, for my friend, uh, Parul Desai, who is heading up Party for Pilgrim this year. So um, as many of you know, Parul, she is a mom to both an eighth grader and a seventh grader here at Pilgrim. And you've maybe met her because she's also a very warm, generous, extroverted person who is a huge supporter and cheerleader of the Pilgrim community. So we've lucked out um, because as an attorney for Cook County, she was actually able to retire this year and decided with all of her free time, she would be the point person for Party for Pilgrim. So she has told me to make sure you all are pulling out your calendars, looking at your phones, saving the date of April 22nd of this year. It is going to be at a new venue. Um, so we know lots of times the first time we're at a new venue, it's kind of exciting. You never know what's going to happen. New fun things. So please make sure you are there. It will be at um, Trigger Event Space at California and Addison, not far. And Parul also said, I need to let you know that we need you. So we desperately are going to be in need of silent auction items. So be thinking about what you have in mind for that or what you might be able to obtain for Pilgrim. And also be thinking about some larger items that could be auctioned during the live auction. So please put your thinking caps on. And um, then we are also in need of sponsors. Pruel said um, that they are still working out the different sponsorship levels, so stay tuned. Um, but lastly and mainly, plan to attend. We are you know, really emerging from this pandemic, and um, I think it's going to be a wonderful time to gather together. Um, 
Let's see, anything else I am supposed to state? Well, I just have to reiterate and, and talk about the fact for those of you that don't know Perul well, she knows how to throw a very nice party. I will just put that out there, so I'm super excited. Um, she is not happy unless everyone around her is well fed and supplied with beverages. And my son Clayton can attest to this um, as a 13 year old who is always eating. Um, he has let me know that Peru is in the running for best mom ever. So I have to up my game weekly to stay in that group. So once again, please mark your calendars April, um, what did I even say, April 22nd. Thank you very much. Now I'm wearing two hats. Um, so now I'm um, stepping out of my role as Parul's um, uh, sidekick. And now I'm going to talk with you about the stewardship committee here at Pilgrim. Um, that is a group that I have been a part of for the last couple years. Um, and one that I'm really excited to be um, a member of. We're a small but mighty group right now. Um, there are five of us. So Renee is a part of it, Pastor, Anakari, Ann Simpson, who is a school parent, not a, not a church member, and myself. We've lost a couple people due to them moving out of state, um, and we can benefit from inclusion um, from, from new folks who might be interested. So just a snippet, if you are at all like me and grew up in a more conservative church community, you hear stewardship and you think this is the group that's gonna ask me for cash um, to support the church. And while that is one of our prongs, we mainly are interested in thinking about how we can work with one another um, and thinking across the Hot Meals community, the school community, the church community, to support our overall community. And we are always looking for new and exciting ways that we can do that. We are a low stakes group to be associated with. Um, we meet usually about once a month. And let me tell you, as a professor, I'm a part of a lot of meetings every week. And this group is one of my favorite meetings to be a part of. We get together, we hang out, we chat, we laugh, we have some food and snacks, we rotate around to different people's homes, um, and then we also share ideas of what in the world we could come up with that might be fun to get different people inspired and energized about being a part of the Pilgrim community. So please pull one of us aside at any point if you even think, you know what, Maybe I'd like to see if this group would run with my idea for something I've been thinking about. And you don't want to commit to monthly meetings for the next year or two. Come once or twice, chat about your idea with us, and we would love to hear what you have to say. So thank you all. See you soon.